Have you ever wanted to race a stock car? If so, you're in luck because today's episode, we're gonna show you how, where to go, and how much it costs. Okay, first, let's talk about the history of stock car racing. Stock car racing started in the 1920s during the Prohibition era, which is where you couldn't drink alcohol. And that didn't work out real well, US government, because guess what happened? These guys called moonshiners started to make it in their backyard with these like steel things. And then they started to soup up their cars to outrun the police and their cousin Eddie. The key was to make a really normal looking car be high performance and keep it on the DL so the police didn't know which ones were which. So one thing leads to another. These guys all have souped up cars and one Sunday afternoon, Billy Bob decides, hey guys, I bet my car can outrun your car. And it was on. And like any good popular grassroots movement, some business guy came along and said, hey, if I make some rules and charge people money, I can make a lot of money. And NASCAR was born. Oh. Fast forward 50 years, and now NASCAR is America's sport. And the stock cars have turned in from your mama's old jalopy with a big engine to now these powerful 900 horsepower finger licking, foot stomping, wheel removing powerhouses that built for speed! <laughs> finger licking. What's up, Colonel Sanders? All right, we are done with history class. Now it's time for you to get off the couch and go racing yourself. Yeah, you! First, you need a track. There are over 80 tracks in the United States alone. Look at the map. There's probably one by you. Okay, so here's a disclaimer. Don't go try to race your little mommy's jalopy on any of these tracks or you will be arrested. Second, you need a guide. On our race car experience, we hired professional stock car racer, Jeb Burton, and his father, the legend, Ward Burton. Now, you're probably not gonna be able to hire these guys because I have a lot deeper pockets than you. <laughs> but here's the good news. You don't have to get arrested and you can have a professional guide by contacting the NASCAR experience. Okay, seriously, these guys are legit. They travel around to NASCAR racetracks all over the country. They team you up with a professional driver. You can ride along for as little as $100 or $300, you can take the left seat by yourself. $300, yeah, I said 300 bucks. That's like half a month's rent or like eight venti vanilla chocolate caramel pumpkin spice double latte things that you drink. That's right. No, seriously, 300 bucks, guys, for this experience is the best value you'll ever get. We did it and it was legit. We did 154 miles an hour. Highly recommend it. Okay, now that you know where to go and who to go with, let's talk about the actual techniques of racing a stock car. First, you wanna find your line. Line. Not that kind of line. The line is the fastest way around the track that'll get you in the winner's circle. But remember, every other race car driver on the track is trying to find the same line. You gotta stay out of the trash. The trash is the lower part, typically below the white line, where all of the debris and the tires and other things are in and the trash will prevent you from having great traction. Okay, now that we've covered the line and trash, let's talk about drafting. You guys probably know what drafting is, and you've probably done it behind a semi-truck on the interstate. If you haven't, I would highly recommend that. Can I say that? I don't think I can say that. Now, drafting is when you use the car in front of you to break the wind. <laughs> I'm such a 12-year-old. <laughs> so less wind is not only more comfortable, it also means less resistance. And when you're racing a stock car, less resistance is everything. So now that we've got drafting down, let's talk about the pass. Drop low, break the line, punch the gas, but don't hit the guy in front of you or you might end up in a fight in pit road. Jeff Gordon out of his car and he's not happy with Matt Kenson. So let's talk about gears. You're only using first through third during the start out. When you hit fourth gear, it's pedal to the metal the whole way, except when you hit a turn. Pump the brakes or you're gonna end up in the wall next to your only fan. Hey, Mom! Assuming you made it alive out of turn four, you wanna point that nose, find the line, and get on those 700 horses! Okay, so I know a lot of people think, uh, hey, I don't have $300 to go blow on a weekend of eight minutes of fun. 
Every stock car racer, including myself, which I am now, started out on go-karts. It's safe, it's fun, it's cheap. There's one probably near you, and it's basically the same experience as driving a stock car yourself. Another option are dirt tracks. Dirt tracks are basically kind of what they used back in the 20s when they were racing each other in the Prohibition era. Basically, a group of rednecks get together in a field, they do a bunch of donuts, and I guarantee you there's one by you. So we've shown you how to be an amateur stock car racer, but let's show you how to be a professional. There's a checklist that you have to have, and when I mean have to, you have to. You have to. Let's break it down. First, you need a healthy dose of courage. You need a lineage of professional stock car racing blood, and you need a smoking hot significant other. And of course, my red hot smoking wife, Carly, who's a stone cold fox. Mm. That's just the first three. And that's all of it, actually. <laughs> Go to our full episode of the NASCAR racing experience that we did. We'll show you exactly how to start and where to go. All right, guys, keep going.